stop. Sure you want the rest of it? Dirty Harry Miller. Dirty Harry Miller. Welcome back to Dirty Harry Minute, the only podcast in the world to review every minute of the 1971 Warner Brothers classic, Dirty Harry. I'm one of your hosts, John, and I'm joined as ever with... Trent. Trent. No, sorry, John, I interrupted your little intro there. Well, you're, you're very emotionally unavailable today because our other, our other co-host, Tim, is... Well, yeah, he, he's not with us. It's a bit of a special day for him, so um, yeah, we might discuss that a bit later. <laughs> But we are joined by regular uh, guest, Glyn. Hello there. Thanks for coming back. My and pleasure. We have first time guest. You know her from the satirical news show, The Leak, Melbourne stand-up comedian, Aurelia Sinclair. Welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Have you ever seen Dirty Harry before? I watched it especially for this podcast. I was aware of the movie um, because of a song <laughs> by Gorillaz. Ah, yeah. Um, Daddy Harry, but um, yeah, I actually enjoyed it. So thanks for making me watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and Glenn, you've uh, se- you've seen the whole movie before. We've never discussed that with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember it that well though, for some <laughs> reason. I remember, you know, the basic, the basic gist of it. Well, today we are reviewing minute sixty-six. The minute begins with Harry coming down some concrete steps and ends with Harry yelling, "Star!" What did you think of this minute, Trent? Uh, well, it's very tense, very suspenseful. Uh, Lalo's score is fantastic. The you know the little chimey electric piano going Rhodes, on. Rhodes, isn't it? I think. It's a Ro- Fender Rhodes. Thank you. Yeah, Fender Rhodes piano, um, and the, you know the, then the swirling strings and things like that. That's uh, yeah, I love it. And you, Aurelia, did you find it? Mm, I was like. What is happening next? <laughs> and also, just a, a minute before, when when he's climbing the fence, um, I actually really enjoyed that. Whenever I'm at the gym, I'm just thinking, this is what I'm training for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you like the way Glenn how the previous in the bank robbery, he goes sort of, halt. But here it's more animalistic. He's just going, stop. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, he's frigging pissed off. That's... I guess that's the justification for what he's doing, really, is that he's just so angry. You kind of wonder, you know, if he hadn't had that little uh, confrontation at the cross, mm. he wouldn't have, it wouldn't be, stop! He'd be more, you know, less animalistic, as Glenn just said. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm still recovering from Alice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a weird... Well, this is another hallucinatory sort of scene later on, very atmospheric. But I think this scene has its place, whereas the Alice side quest was just baffling. <laughs> you weren't here for that, Glenn. I, I, I mean, this is this is maybe this is indicative of my personality or something. But I absolutely love that shot yeah. when he fires and you just see Scorpio go flip in the air. I think you are uh, invading the next minute, Trent. Am I? <laughs> Why am I invading the? Oh, That's so, oh whoops, sorry. <laughs> So, so, what does the minute end with? What's the last? Stop. Oh, okay. So, it's just him chasing him in a dark I think stadium. architects and building managers will love this minute because we get to see concrete, which is still very much in use today in modern uh, sports stadiums. Glenn. I believe it's still reinforced concrete, <laughs> <laughs> John. But that stadium looks uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely Marvel Stadium, more comfortable seats. <laughs> <laughs> You went to that stadium, didn't you, John? I did. As previously discussed, it's a, a, literally a shell of its former self. It doesn't have the bandstands and it's been, been completely redrun as a, an athletic track that trendy people can run around with, you know, with their ah. dogs and lattes, yeah. yeah what nice. are the chairs like now? Because that's, that's... Yeah, they're plastic from memory, black plastic. Do they have backs, though? Yeah. 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 So I'd say just as uncomfortable, but... Maybe your bum's a bit more comfortable on the black. But it looks better being black. It's <laughs> yeah. got mm. that concrete against, you know, gentrified. Obviously, I host a podcast earlier, so I've <laughs> never been inside a sports stadium of any 
<laughs> of any kind. <laughs> Do you like Glenn? He's uh, Scorpio's hobbling. I do. It's very entertaining. It's very <laughs> believable. Yeah, it is pretty believable. Yeah. You think you'd like to hear a Kenny Rogers song, the hobbler, rather than the gambler? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that song. I blocked that one out. So, although I don't know much about sport, the symbolism's not lost on me, Trent, that, you know, a football stadium is a centre of competition, you know. Mm. And here are these two people <laughs> alone at night. <laughs> The hunter and his prey. I don't know. I, I think I mentioned to you, I was watching an episode of the Australian Cop Show Division 4 a few weeks back from the same year. Mm. And there's a, a bit where um, a couple of bank robbers who murdered someone have gone to a football match and they're hiding among the crowd. Anyway, the police have surrounded the stadium and you know, they can't get out. After the football match has ended, it's suddenly dark. And there's a lot of shots very reminiscent of this scene. And they turned all the, the lights out rather than on. And the policeman's trying to run through across the field knowing that the guy is on there. And the, um, the cops are surrounding and they're trying to, like, work out which is the criminal and which is the cop to shoot at. Good music during it? Uh, or I stock? <laughs> I think it was silent, which yeah. made it even... And it's black and white, very grainy film. Of, like, quite... Yeah, a little bit more disturbing than this, which I didn't think was possible. Like, not disturbing, but kind of eerie and... Um, Jarring. Mm. I love the timing of his partner turning on the lights. Mm. Yeah. It's so, so perfect. Each one switching on. Yeah, because he tells him to go and he fat chains him. What a bastard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then- Well, he doesn't want him to be involved. He knows something gnarly is going to go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, then he's, but then he still turns on the light and like helps him. So that first shot, you know, after his partner's turned on the light and you see Harry limit, lit up and illuminated- yeah. On the VHS copy pre, you know, widescreen being standard, uh, you know, on home medium, it was a pan and scan from right to left. So, you oh saw God. The, the pistol, the magnum in the center of the screen and the panned across. And just then I looked across and go, oh, oh yeah, shit, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it does, it's not meant to do that. But so I'm, uh, that's what I'm used to, even after all this time. And, I still um, reckon you can see when it's pan, like, it, oh, yeah. it looks so freaking bad. Yeah. So, some labels were better at it than others, a bit more sort of artful, shall we say, but yeah, others yeah. just would flick on the switch and uh, I guess better move it here and there. We've got a nice quote here about the music, uh, Glenn, which I think sums up Lalo's. You said he's got a new album coming out. Before Something we- like that. Or- I keep on seeing notifications that he has some sort of new album, but I don't know how much new material it's got. Well, some reviewers have praised the music in this movie, uh, Aurelia, saying that it's very masculine, but yet without trumpets. Like, it's a lot of... But anyway. Yeah, yeah. Quote, the music often couples a camera going out of focus with increasingly experimental psychedelic music, as though both the visual and oral senses are getting hazy. Fast-paced jazz turns into a slow psychedelic rock or ambient track in just a matter of seconds. The music is one of the best things about this 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 movie, don't you think, Aurelia? I agree. Um, when I started watching it, I noticed that straight away, even in the, the very first scene. Um, yeah. It's definitely something I enjoyed in it and something I don't often notice in movies. So it says something that I did with this one. It's such a shame that um, it's great music, but it's all sort of so short that you can understand why they didn't release a the soundtrack album for many years because it's very disconnected and disjointed like Scorpio's mind. But yeah, it's something I noticed as well. Well, They're all little cues really, aren't they? Yeah. There isn't sort of like an overture piece besides the intro. Yeah. Harry has his theme when he's looking at the body. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Do, do, do. So that new Lalo release is the early years enlightenment. A four-disc set, which includes all 10 albums above. There's actually like 20 albums above and mm-hmm. below marked with a cross. So, there you go. Something we didn't remark on last time is the elements of the Zodiac Killer they've incorporated here. It turns out that the main suspect for being the Zodiac, Arthur Lee Allen, was a janitor too and had done some work um, in municipal properties. So, maybe that's part of Scorpio's... Um, Job here, Glenn. Did he live at a stadium, though? <laughs> I don't think directly, no. But he had footprints they found at the murder of one of the Zodiac stabbings at Lover's Lane, had uh, military-style boots they extracted a, a mud, print, mud print from. As uh, we can see here, Scorpio has his 
vaguely, uh, I think, paratrooper boots, we thought. Yeah, I saw those. The thing is, is the white laces, though, like, that. that's, I don't know, that's not very military. No. But that shit's going to stand out. But yeah, he has mm. sweet, awesome boots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scorpio looks like such a... He's the prey, right, Trent, isn't he? In this scene, he's definitely the prey. Oh, yeah. Mm. And Scorpio is like the star sign is the scorpion, right? You think they should have maybe had him as the Taurus killer or... <laughs> is he the... Which zodiac sign Aurelia is the the bull or like... Mm, I would say the most likely Zodiac killer is probably Gemini. Oh, yeah. yeah. Two-faced bitches. It's <laughs> ready to backstab you. Yeah, I'm um, Gemini. Yeah, my boyfriend's a Gemini. <laughs> um, myself, I'm a Libra. I don't think there's any Libra serial killers. I actually saw that as a fact once when researching my star sign. Um, what about Dexter? He could have been a Libra. He kept the balance, right? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Um, I I don't think Dexter is, like, such a bad person, though. <laughs> maybe Scorpio or Scorpion's apt because he's, like, a bug. He's a bug that Harry's trying to yeah. stamp on, you know? Mm. He's Louis the Fly to Harry's Mortine in this, <laughs> in this scene. You know? Louis the Fly. I always thought it just sounded like that G.I. Joe baddie. <laughs> I always thought it sounded kind of hilarious, like Scorpio, Scorpio. or something. Um, but yeah, I, I, that's, I always just thought it was that it kind of, because he gave himself that name, right? Like I am yeah. this in the notes. Sign that it, Scorpio. That it kind of just made him more pathetic that he was just like, yeah, that's my name, Scorpio. And it's like, it's probably like Alan or something or Frank, <laughs> something in completely boring. Uh, well, in the novelization, his name, they've given him is Charles Davis. <laughs> Charles Davis. Charles or Chuck to his uh, fellow serial killers. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, uh, I hope you're listening, but the, uh, you know, we have someone with a self-proclaimed name, the Purple Professor in our lives. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Purple Hello, professor. Michael, if you're listening. <laughs> what? Is it like the Blue Raja thing and he throws forks? <laughs> no, no, he's the Purple Professor. He, we- he wears purple. Oh, okay. <laughs> My cousin used to wear a, a, a purple suit in the 90s. He thought, yeah, right. he, he, thought he looked great. <laughs> <laughs> I think Michael's on this program at some point He will be, yeah right. mm. Hello again, Michael He's definitely not uh, interview shy But he's more of a Schwarzenegger <laughs> fan than an Eastwood fan <laughs> Well, I think I've delayed this too long, Trent mm. um, I knew when we started this podcast That we'd have to talk about Miranda rights And, you know, rights to silence And I think we have to follow on from our conversation last minute. Hang on. Isn't that the next minute, though? Isn't the well, next minute? I'll spread this out because I, find okay. it, I personally find this stuff quite interesting. We were talking about the rights for searches before and whether the, the rifle that we found earlier would all automatically be thrown out and in pretty much in America it would be. Obviously, back then, you know, decades before DNA, even when ballistics weren't as conclusive as they are today, a lot of convictions really were based on confessions or sites, you know, people observing things happened. And there was an activist court, uh, the the Warren Court, um, where the rights to silence and a right to counsel were a compulsory during police interrogations. Previously, it was thought this right to silence was just a strict one at trial. You didn't have to say anything. But now it was ruled that evidence that was abstracted before the court case by police, you had to show them the rights. And the famous one was Escobedo versus Illinois, uh, where the criminals, uh, the suspects had a right to counsel. We talked about that. In that case, they held a man for 14 hours, didn't let let him speak to an attorney, and no statement he made was allowed to be used at court against him. Miranda versus Arizona, the Fifth Amendment, they also had a right to be silent completely. Uh, After two hours of interrogation, Miranda signed a confession but was not told at all of his right to remain silent. Now, later decision of Edward versus Arizona said that at any point during an interview or interrogation with a cop, at any point, you can waive some questions, you can waive some answers, and you can accept others. And you constantly have to be told, the police have to inform you of the right to silence. Just because you've given one piece of information doesn't mean you have to continue. What do you think about that, Glenn? So, I mean, this scene in... Okay, so they do this a lot in movies where what what the cop is doing is clearly against procedure and for good reason. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's always one of those things where in, in, in a story like this when we're seeing it, it's sort of presented as almost frustrating and kind of 
Mm-hmm. Like I imagine that Rush Limbaugh would 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 love this. He's like you know hippies with the damn rights, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but the whole thing is that, that that's meant to curb abuse. That's that's why it exists. Yeah, and but I also wonder. It's easy. Yeah, if it's yeah. easy to be a cop, then it is a police state, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the, I mean, the whole thing about the holding someone for, for huge periods of time without letting them speak to a lawyer or something like the idea is that you can just use pressure to get confessions out of people. And that's not, not necessarily accurate. Mm. And that's the, whole, that's the whole problem. In this instance, like we talked about the fruit of the poisonous tree, like the gun probably wouldn't be admitted, right? Well... Yeah. Okay, so so, the, the, but from what I understand, though, the problem is movies often do represent all this kind of stuff, and that that cops do have quite a lot of like. Would he have so? Hang on, so I remember. That, okay, so how did he find out where Scorpio was through going? a tip? Through a tip. Yep. Did they observe him entering the premises? No, it wasn't a hot pursuit at all. All right, so they probably wouldn't have probable cause. That's right. To enter, so right then, it's like if he doesn't have a search warrant. Um, then yeah, the the rifle probably wouldn't be admissible, and that's his his fuck up. Like I understand why there's this urgency to what he's doing, but this is the problem with not following the procedure. Is that if you actually want to convict them, then Aurelia, do you think? I mean, if you were in an interrogation room mm. for two hours and they told you you have to write to remain silent, and mm. you didn't say anything for two hours. I mean, you'd have to be really fucking strong. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to be a proper psycho yeah. to just sit there and get like all these questions fired at you and not say a single thing. Um, but I mean, it depends on, you know, what's happening in the US. You see in my social media feed, I see all the time, um, Chicago police burst into a five-year-old girl's birthday party mm. without a warrant because someone because gave the cake them, was so delicious. <laughs> someone gave them a tip that the person who lived there, like seven years ago, was wanted for mm. some offense. Mm. And yeah, that's an abuse. You know, you're like, why would you not like do your research? But <coughs> I don't know if the person they're looking for was a serial killer. Then you know, we are going to talk later in minutes about some exceptions, the public safety test that can allow you to get un statements into court. Mm. But, but of course, there, there is other evidence. You could find pliers that have fingerprint that took her teeth off. Maybe those pliers are in the hole, you know, yeah, yeah. and those sort of things. They can compel him to do a handwriting test and compare that from the, the ransom note. But, yeah, none of, none of what we see happen in the stadium can be ever talked about in court, really. Yeah, and then I mean, are we talking about the next part, like, after he says stop? Because then... Because <laughs> it's like what he does there is so, like... Uh, one of those things, like, from the perspective of the character, we understand why he does it. Yeah. Because we know Scorpio is guilty and all this kind of... But you Yeah, know, but if you're in a jury, you haven't watched the Dirty yeah, Harry yeah. movie. <laughs> in, yeah. It, well, it's, it's, I always love that. Like, in reality, there isn't a camera there. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's always the whole thing with, you know, with movies and stuff like that. We don't have cameras everywhere that can tell us these clear versions of events. So, are we supposed to just believe... A police officer, like in in if if we were the jury in this case, we're not watching the movie. We're if it was Clint, if Clint was on trial, well, this is the whole thing. Like, <laughs> are you saying that that because like it, it's like wow, it's Clint Eastwood? Like you'd be more likely to believe him as I a jury. Would. I would, but I, what about you, Trent? Oh, absolutely. Anything Clint says. I mean, six- even after he speaks to presidential chairs, <laughs> a six foot five guy with that kind of voice and that permanent squint, and you know the way he turns his mouth. Yeah, you know, he looks like he's been drawn as Sergeant Rock, that you know, comic book character in the military. Um, <laughs> he's he's gonna you know fuck you up. So yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> well, Glenn, we have the case Wong Sun versus United States, nineteen sixty three. Uh, a policeman posed as a customer at a laundry door. Uh, he was invited into the laundry. Uh, the launder. What's the person who does laundry? The launderer. No, that sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> he was invited into his bedroom, and once there, he revealed that he was in fact a narcotics agent. I.e., he had no warrant. Um, the man fled or attempted to flee and was arrested. It was later held that there was neither reasonable grounds, which is a legislation or probable cause in the Constitution, for his arrest, since the information that led the agent to go to the laundry was based on very vague evidence. 
a vague, vague informant information. But after he was arrested, after fleeing from his laundry, he gave some information that appeared that indicated a third party was selling drugs. Probably good drugs, too. Um, the court held his statements derived immediately from an unlawful entry. And this was an oppressive event which caused the statements and the arrest to become inextricably intertwined. So they couldn't use his later information, even though he'd fled. The policeman's illegal search led to him fleeing and any confession there was inextricably yeah. linked to an arrest. So that was in admit- uh, wasn't allowed to be admitted. But he was invited inside, right? He was. So it does in- adhere to vampire rules then. <laughs> <laughs> like- Vampires and entrapment. Yeah. Isn't that in The Lost Boys the Lost or something Boys. like that? Yeah, where the vampire has to be invited inside. And if they do, then the garlic thing doesn't work and yes. the holy water doesn't work, which is weird. When Max... The, the mother's new boyfriend, played that's by right. Edmund Herman, needs yeah. to be invited into the house. That's right. Yeah, and he like insists on it. So that's that always reminds me. Isn't there an Eddie Murphy movie where there's a similar thing? Vampire where- in Brooklyn. I'm gonna yeah, guess. Yeah. I haven't seen it. But- oh god, <laughs> I haven't. I haven't. I just remember Eddie Murphy with like Mullet. long, with like really long hair and like and <laughs> fangs. You know, looking awesome. Have you like- seen that one, Aurelia? I haven't, but there's a Key and Peele sketch with the same oh. exact thing. Oh, I want to watch that. I it's, love Key it's and very good. Those guys are my heroes because they're trying to reinvigorate my childhood, you know, favourites, Police Academy, right? They've been trying to remake that. Really? And the Twilight Zone they've just remade, haven't they? Or yeah. Mr. That, Peele, yeah, version, coming out soon. Yeah. Who's the narrator on that? I think he might be. Yeah, shit. The problem with the, the the Twilight Zone reboot, though, is that it's like we sort of have the Twilight Zone when it came out. It was really special. It was unique. But now we've got like Black Mirror yeah. and now like Netflix is doing their own thing. And there's other stuff like there's lots of sci fi anthology kind of. Yeah. Electric dreams. Yeah. So yeah, it's true. It's not a novelty, really. Anymore. Yeah. But the fact that that Jordan Peele's mm. doing it means well, it'll probably be great. That's pretty much all I've got for this minute, guys. But Glenn, just. Referring back to that Wong Sun case, do you think Scorpio running away, he's, he's running away across a field, but Harry's illegally searched that place. Now, and the other thing is, hang on, has Harry identified himself as a, as a police officer? Because this is the other thing as well, yeah. is that if the police don't identify themselves, he's not, he's not in a uniform. There's someone with a gun chasing after you. You're going like, to run. You're going you? to run away. Yeah. Like, it is That's completely- why he should have said, halt. Which is more official rather than stop. You know? He should have said, citizen's arrest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> citizen's on patrol. So, does him running away end him being in custody and now it's reactivated a pursuit, I suppose, is my question. Is it inextricably linked? His, he's pursuing him, but it's as a result of an illegal search in your mind. Like, obviously, if, if Harry had followed Scorpio straight from Mount Davidson Cross, you could say, well, he's, it's a hot pursuit and he's following him. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, that's clear. Well, hang on, is he dressed the same? Because you could, because if you if you were say if you, if you could say that he was wearing the same clothes, he was plus lim- a bandage. He was yeah, plus <laughs> a bandage. He was limping on the same leg. I stabbed him in. Yeah, I like I stabbed him on. So then then you could maybe make the argument, but again, he didn't have a warrant to enter the premises. Yeah, but is it private property? I guess it's not his private property though. It belongs to the stadium. Yeah, the ground. I don't know. The groundsman probably didn't have. If, yep. Yeah, and hang on. How the IMD you, message the- boards were full of this. The groundsman didn't have authority to let him stay there, so <laughs> it's not a like it's not his proper premises. Yeah, and and did the groundsman let him in? Like how did how did they he get into the stadium? Defense. Um, his partner said, "Private property, keep out," or some sign along those lines. Oh, on the too much linguini line. Is that yeah. this one? Yeah, that's, that's the one. <laughs> Well, that's pretty much all I've got for this minute. Trent, anything else to add? Nada. It it ends on a very... <gasps> on a, Yeah, what's going to happen? Now, Aurelia, did you have anything else to add? Body cameras all the way. <laughs> <laughs> did you enjoy the movie, all in all? Mm, I did. I liked, I liked the ending. I liked the whole yeah. vibe of it. Well, thanks. Many thanks for joining us, Aurelia. Thank you for having me. We want you back for future minutes, maybe... Sometime after the comedy festival. I'd love that. <laughs> yeah, I'd l- I love the end of the movie. Yes. And you've said also your boyfriend was a big fan or his mother was his, a fan of his Eastwood. His grandma um, loved Clint Eastwood. He was her favorite actor and she actually passed away in the 70s. Wow. So. She never saw him get his due. Yeah, she never no saw him in his true prime. <laughs> yeah. 
did she ever hear any of his romantic love songs that he wrote <laughs> and recorded? Have you heard those? Roses <laughs> are <laughs> They're freaking great. <laughs> I just love the idea of him. <laughs> With this like gravelly voice, just like, yeah, I want to record a love song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure she would have loved that too. Well, Aurelia, where can where can listeners find your work? You can find me on Instagram at Aurelia Daily. That's A U R E L I A Daily, and also on Facebook at Aurelia Daily. Check her out. Great comedian. Unfortunately, by the time this gets up, you're. Your Melbourne Comedy Festival run will have finished, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll catch you next time. Glenn, you'll return in the next yeah. minute. We'll yeah, catch sure. you next time, Trent, on... Dirty, Dirty Harry, Harry Minute. Minute.